Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special election edition of News Now. I'm Roger Colton. Between now and Election Day on April 6th, Franklin Tucker and I will be interviewing candidates in townwide elections. Today, Franklin and I interview Tim Flood, who is a candidate for the Belmont School Committee. Let's get started. Franklin, you have the first question. Thank you. Mr. Flood, uh, let me just ask you the, uh, a question that I, I think is uh, uh, pretty revealing, and that is that you've uh, come out against the override when the, I believe you're the only um, person running for a major office who's doing that. Can you please explain that? Sure. Uh, so, you know, it, it is unfortunate the override's on the ballot this year. Um, it it, it, it kind of, it takes away the uh, conversation that is needed around the school committee. Uh, with that said, uh, the override is a pressing matter within the town. And it is something that, um, unfortunately uh, needs needs to be the the top of the topic of, of conversation across the board um you know it's a we're in the middle of a pandemic um granted the weather's coming nice and people are starting to to leave their houses a little bit but this is far from over and we're still reeling from the reality that we've had a lot of individuals in town that have lost their jobs they've reduced hours uh they've they've had pay cuts there's an abundance of things that have provided uh, negative aspects of this for, for our community. And, you know, al although I wish the conversation was around, you know, specifically the, the school committee, unfortunately, this is a town wide vote. It is not specific to the school community. And, you know, I, I wish it was um, looked at a little bit more broadly than it is, but, you know, that's where we're at. Yeah. Let, let's assume, for the purposes of this question, that, uh, that you're elected to the school committee. And on the school committee, you face a decision where the opinion of the Belmont community is definitely a certain way. But the information that you have would uh, uh, make you believe that a different decision is appropriate. How, how would you resolve that tension? So uh, are you specifically asking, uh, referring to the override? No, no, not, a, not at all. Just uh, the community wants one thing and you believe that a different decision is more appropriate. Uh, you know, which, what's your job to represent, uh, to reflect the community or to make a decision on what you believe is in the best interest of the community? So I, I think, you know, the answer to that is both. Um, you have to walk a very fine line uh, when you're addressing anything that involves the community and, and in particular with the, um, our, our uh, school community. Um, you know, our job as elected officials is to represent the community as a whole. But with that, you're not out there making your own decisions. You're getting feedback from the community. You're, you're having the conversations with the community, you're making sure that the community is part of the original conversation. Uh, you know, and I, I think that is actually been part of the problem this last year is the community wasn't part of the conversation. So any of the, any of, of the um, short and long-term decisions that have been made have been made without community input. And that's caused some of the rift that's happened in town. Okay, Mr. Flood. Um, I know we we know that you um, you you you've spoken be, uh, before about um, um, things about the, the school committee as 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 it is currently laid out. Um, but let me look, go forward to um, uh, education uh, in the future. If you're elected, what will be a, a major policy goal of yours? So one of the, the biggest policies that needs to be set, set in place is um, a means by which uh, communication from the overall community uh, is incorporated. Uh, that, that is, um, there is some steps towards that now, um, you know, which I, I credit Evelyn for. Um, I, I believe she was one of the ones that brought that up and said, hey, we need to have office hours. Um, you know, so that, that's definitely a good step forward. Um, you know, but it, I think, um, you know, Given what's happened this last year, they need to take some more steps and, and make sure there's an actual um, avenue for, for people to interact with the school, with the school committee 
Uh, and, you know, and as well as with the superintendent's office, um, you know, likewise, because, you know, it, it should be the, the overall thought process for me is everyone should be working as a team and, and making sure that, that com there is communication from all aspects, um, you know, because at the end of the day, we're all representing the community, you know, but it's making sure that all our students are educated in an equitable manner across the board. Jim, when uh, you run for the school committee, uh, again, I'd like to assume that, uh, that you get elected. You, you get elected for a three-year term. And if you do get elected for a three-year term, that means that hopefully a year from now, COVID-19 will be in our rearview mirror. The new school will be open. So let's go to 2023. What, what issues do you believe will be facing the Belmont school community in 2023? So, you know, the, the reality is, and I'm going to come back to the override. The override is needed within the town. There, there's no question about that. My, my standpoint on it now is timing. That's it. You know, so as far as a pressing matter coming 22, 23, we do have to have an override. Um, you know, so that it will be a point of contention moving forward, you know, regardless of, of the thought of the um, uh, taking steps to make sure we're uh, spending more wisely, there will be a need for an override. So the, that is something that will, I think it's better to start the conversation now and continue the conversation through the next year. Um, and then, you know, hopefully everyone will get on the same page. And, and come to an agreement before we actually put it on the ballot. So, Mr. Flood, um, one of the um, things as a, t as a if you're elected, you'll be a member of a team, a, a six member team. Uh, part of that uh, part of that uh, responsibility is being um, a member of uh, subcommittees. Can you tell me what subcommittees you're looking to be uh, to go on to in the uh, school committee? Uh, so, you know, um, in all honesty, I haven't thought about, you know, the particular subcommittees. Uh, obviously, uh, special education is near and dear to me. Uh, so, um, you know, subcommittees around that would be the, the first things I would look at. Um, with that said, there is a financial subcommittee. And I think that one would be an important one for me to be part of. Tim, I, I'd like you to define your job or not your job, but the job of a school committee member. So we're not talking about you personally. That's the point I was making. But to define the job of a school committee member relative to the school superintendent, is, is the job of a school committee member to direct the superintendent, to supervise the superintendent, to provide input? What should the relationship be? So obviously the school committee is responsible for, for policy. Uh, with that said, you know, the, everyone needs to go into this with the um, students, the, their best interest in mind. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's a responsibility of the school committee to essentially supervise the ongoing of the administration. Uh, with that said, you know, it is teamwork and, and there, there, there's always, you know, some give and take as you're moving down the road. Um, you know, you, 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 you don't want to be overbearing, but, it, but at the same time, you want to make sure that everyone's accountable to the community. So Mr. Flood, um, you're, a, you're a, a great advocate for uh, special education and uh, making sure that uh, uh, kids uh, get their, are, are equitably um, benefited in the school system if they have uh, special needs. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, how you would strengthen that, and and also uh, also about equity um, in let's say uh, racial equity and um, other equity like that? Sure. So you know, uh, when you look at equity across the board, um, the conversations need to be at the table. Um, you know, when special education, obviously. Um, um, fairly well known in town for, for being vocal about that. Um, you know, so it simply needs to be part of the conversation. If you're not having 
that part of the conversation at the table for all of for for every single um, uh, conversation that's happened there. You know, regardless of, of what it entails, you know, it, it need you need to have special education on the table for conversations. You need to have equity on the table for all conversations. You know, in, in equity, one of the uh, most significant things that's come up recently is, you know, how do we make it more equitable, you know, in regards to hiring? You know, and, you know, one thing I, I learned recently and, and, you know, a different way of thinking about it is, you know, you should be um, hiring the same way you would uh, recruit a football player, you know, for, for a, 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 um, a college team. You need to get, go out there and you need to seek who you're looking for. Kim, the, the school committee uh, in Belmont, or as with the school committee in any community, has certain authority delegated uh, to it by state statute. Uh, can you explain what the, the limits or how you see the limits of the, the school committee's authorities and how a school committee can be effective while staying within those limits? So, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of aspects to that. Um, you know, the, the most important thing that I think about with regards to the school committee and, and their job and, and, and how it's played out this last year is negotiation. Uh, that, that's the most important thing that I think the school committee's job is, uh, I, I think, realistically. Um, you know, when you're negotiating with, with the BEA, uh, it, it, it's important to have mutual respect sitting at that table. But it's also important to understand that your role is to the community and your role is to your students. And, and you know, I, I think that historically, uh, the school committee is giving up all, has has given up a lot of ground when it comes to negotiation. And, and I think that's been a, a hindrance in today's world. And, you know, so that, that that's the key thing that I would look at is is making sure that we have a, a strong stance on negotiation. And I guess my final question is, you're given 30 seconds with a, a resident of Belmont. Um, tell him why he should, he or she should vote for you. Well, the, real, the reality is, you know, when you're running for any office, you know, I, 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 I know, I know the, 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 the numbers, you know, it's 40% already like you, 40% don't, and then there's 20% you're, you're, you're trying to convince. And the reality is, I'm not trying to convince anyone to do anything. They need to make their own decisions. They need to make sure that they're taking the time to research all the candidates, not pick one because it's a friend of a friend. They, they need to take their time, research, and make sure they understand why they're making their own decision. I'm not trying to convince you to you know, choose me. I'm trying to convince everyone that there is more information out there than is being pushed upon them. And I think that's a significant difference for me to, you know, some of the others running. That's great. Thanks for joining us today, Tim. You've been watching a special election edition of News Now. Today, Franklin Tucker and I have been speaking with Tim Flood, a candidate for the Belmont School Committee. Between now and Election Day, Franklin and I will be interviewing each candidate for a townwide position. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.